and you can, well, look to your left and to your north and, and you can see what's out in front of you. The sense of serenity, <laughs> you know, like you can come up here and sit for hours and you just blend back into nature. My name's Leslie Patterson. I am an elder of the Bambi Nation and I'm an elder of the Aboriginal Nation of Australia. We're on Bambi country. So there's 11 of us rangers. Um, you know, we're all brothers, sisters, cousins and aunties and uncles. And what our role is, is to uh, look after the country, bring it back to the country our ancestors had it. So talking about stories, um, you know, doing dance, talking language again, talking about cultural burning and how it's uh, benefited our people for thousands of years and how we've been here for thousands of years and we are the longest living culture on this, on this earth. My name's Tremaine Patterson and I've been a Bambi Ranger here for 11 years now. Our people did some artwork on here. We had the, the echidna, the cooker in Bambi language. Uh, we also have kangaroo, and then also um, a line which people indicated uh, day's journeys to the next uh, food source or water source. Water Ridge is an IPA, an Indigenous protected area, which means it's owned and managed by Bambi people. It's just Aboriginal people getting back land and looking after land, having that connection to country. It was our first IPA in New South Wales. Got it back in 1997. It was sick and we came out and we had a look and um, that's when we started doing burns. This is around about a good time to burn. Right around to uh, September. With the way we burn, it's um, totally different. Um, we do it at the right time of the year. We don't decide when the country needs to be burned. She tells us when it needs to be burned. So that's who we listen to and that's our job as our people to be able to look after the country and know that knowledge as well and get it passed down from our, from our elders and pass it down to our, to our younger generation so that knowledge keeps continuing. Before we do a burn, we, we look at which part of the country needs burning first, so we'll go assess it. We'll put in um, containment lines. We'll have all the rangers um, out there to help. We'll look at which direction the wind's going. We'll, we'll have a start ignition point and then we'll just walk it from there. Um, we'll just follow it. We just use grass to push it along. We use the wind, the sun, the heat. It gives enough time for the, the animals, the creatures, the critters and all that to get away. They can smell the smoke, they can feel the fire coming. So when the, when the smoke hits the trees, the seed pods open up and then when um, you know, the winded country time comes, where all the wind's blowing and then you know, all the seeds are getting flicked around and then they hit the ground and then the rain come and then it soaks it all in and then summer comes as well. So there's all that process you've got to look at as well. You know, our people knew that. And it's sharing that knowledge and to be able to hold that knowledge and, and keep it going, that'll, that'll get this country back to its natural state. Won't be in our lifetime, but you know, hopefully our children's children's children can, you know, just keep pushing that along. At this time, I'd like to introduce Michelle McKimmy. She's done her PhD on Wattle Ridge. She's an ecologist. So my PhD is looking at cross-cultural science. Um, so how Indigenous and non-Indigenous people can work together to bring together two different knowledge systems um, to understand how to manage our environment better. So in the case here at Wattle Ridge, they have reintroduced cultural burning here after the country hasn't been burnt for a long time. And we were really interested to follow the ecological and the cultural changes that came about when cultural burning was reintroduced to a long unburnt ecosystem. So as part of that process, the Bambi Rangers identified that they wanted to know what impact cultural burning had on their totem, the echidna or kukra. They also wanted to know what impact cultural burning had on the backwater grevillea, which is a threatened species that's only found in this area. With the echidna, we found that cultural burning had no significant impact on its habitat, whereas the other types of fire, the hazard reduction and the bushfire, did have a significant impact on its habitat. Our last major fire was in 2019. We had about eight fires actually burning around us. Yeah, just come through roaring. You know, extreme fire. Australia didn't need it. A lot of the banks here has sort of suffered a bit. A lot of the eucalyptus trees, they're sort of coming back slowly. 
but I'd like to see the trees come back a bit quicker. <laughs> There's plenty of grevilleas around. Like you can just see some of them coming, just coming through. Yeah. In this area, we call it the backwater grevillea because it only grows in this area. We've tried different ways of stimulating it to grow too, but we found that the fire is the best for it. It germinates on mass following fire. So we found we put one cultural burn in and it killed 40% of the mature shrubs, but it also stimulated a mass germination event, which meant that there were both old growth shrubs and the new generation of seedlings in a multi-age community. But then with the bushfire, it came through and it killed 99.6% of all the mature shrubs. So it just took out all of the old growth grevilleas. If we continue to get frequent fire, that seed bank will continue to be depleted and this plant, which is only found in this area, will be heading fairly quickly towards extinction. The predictions are that the world is entering the pyrocene. So you might have heard of the Anthropocene, which is um, man-made changes where the human population is actually having an impact on the entire planet. Well, the Pyrocene is an extension of that, and that's saying that with climate change, fire is going to become a lot more prevalent. It'll be more dangerous. Uh, it'll be bigger bushfires, like the bushfires we saw with Black Summer. So we really need to have our A-game for how we're going to manage these bushfires. And we need to use all the knowledge systems we can possibly use. So Aboriginal people can really contribute to that through their knowledge. And just by allowing them to access their land and being able to practise their traditional practices of fire management, it can really contribute to that overall strategy that we're all going to have to have going into the future to manage bushfire. Our grandparents and parents, you know, fought very hard, um, you know, for us to have this country to be able to work on. So I, I take that with a lot of pride. To be able to do the work, you know, that the older followers have set out for us to do, to bring back culture, to bring back language, to be able to look after the country. And it's the spiritual connection our people have with burning country as well. It's like a, it's a healing process too. So it's up to us now to be able to bring that back and to start teaching that as, um, you know, to our children, very important. We all live in the one country and, and we've got to work together to make this a better country, a safer country for everyone, for ourselves and for our future generations. <laughs>